When I think of health, my mind often defaults to metrics like blood sugar, avoiding diabetes, lowering triglycerides, avoiding cardiovascular disease, and things of that ilk. I imagine that your mind does too, but correct me if I'm wrong. That said, though, your eyes are often overlooked, yet they are, arguably, among the most important areas of your body. And considering that you're watching this through them, it might be prudent to take care of them. So, in this, I'd like to present two molecules that are believed to have an outsized, pretty incredible benefit for these things. These two molecules, called lutein and zeaxanthin, are often cited as potent for eye health. But is that really true? So I analyzed six studies investigating that question, including some considerations that I think are being left out of most conversations around these molecules. So lutein and zeaxanthin are unique in a few key ways, as I learned. One is their distribution in the eye. Lutein is more evenly spread across the retina of the eye. However, zeaxanthin has much greater specificity for the macula, a more central part of your eye. I find that accumulation of zeaxanthin and a close sibling, mesozeaxanthin, fascinating. Not only that, most other carotenoids, which are the class of molecules that lutein and zeaxanthin belong to, do not accumulate in the eye, making these two special in their specificity. I think that's so cool. And beyond that, the fact that scientists have discovered that, by the way, that all comes from these studies, really speaks to how much a benefit science can provide because now it focuses our attention on these two molecules as opposed to swimming in target molecules to investigate. Anyway, th does that uniqueness actually translate to improvements in the eye? Well, if you'll indulge me, I'd like to describe some of the fascinating mechanisms by which lutein and zeaxanthin affect your eye cells. And then we'll get into some of the nuances of the clinical data. I promise that I won't hang on to this for too long, but come on, it's cool to understand how these things work. So you consume these molecules, if that's in supplement form or food, and I'll mention a few foods that contain them later, and then they get transported to your eyes where they get taken up by binding proteins that escort them into the cell. Once in the cell, the unique chemical structure of these molecules allows them to be exceptional at quenching reactive oxygen species, these damaging molecules that are produced by the cells, especially when assaulted by damaging factors like ultraviolet radiation. But they actually don't solely roam around the cell willy-nilly. They are targeted to the cell membrane and integrated into the membrane. Beyond that, once integrated, they recruit antioxidant binding proteins to the cell membrane. These proteins are also with the ability to quench these damaging molecules that might otherwise accumulate over time. It's pretty sweet how biology works. In fact, scientists and clinicians, as far as I'm aware, use a popular measure called MPOD, or macular pigment optical density, to assess the natural filter found in the eye that is responsible for protecting the eye from undue stress that we've been talking about. So, the relationship is direct. The higher one's MPOD score, the better one's assumed eye health. Now, keep in mind, there are other metrics of eye health, so I don't want to be entirely reductive, but the this MPOD score is believed to be a pretty powerful one. So, what do studies show on the effect that lutein and zeaxanthin have on MPOD, or macular pigment? If we crack open this study and look at the data therein, here, people were assigned to be on an active intervention, which included lutein and zeaxanthin, or the placebo, which is a non-active pill over 12 months, which we see on the timetable on the horizontal axis there. The orange line is the active intervention, the blue being the placebo. The higher the lines go, the greater the macular pigment. I suppose I don't really need to even mention this because you can see it with your own lutein and zeaxanthin filled eyes, but the active ingredient clearly had an effect with the placebo doing, well, diddly squat. But we needn't rely on one study. A systematic review of 46 studies confirms these findings. It's also important to point out that many of the studies are done in people without notable eye pathology. So these are healthy individuals 
and they still see this rise in eye pigment over a relatively short period, so a few months to a year. I imagine that the results might be even more robust for people with some form of eye pathology, but I haven't investigated that in detail. Okay, awesome. But in reality, macular pigment density is only a proxy metric that tracks well with better eye health, but it doesn't actually speak to the direct measurements of eye health. So shouldn't we do our due diligence and see if there's a direct effect? As in, if I consume these molecules, do I experience improvements in eye function directly? Well, I wondered the same thing, and I suppose that's self-evident considering that I'm driving this narrative. So if we pop open this study anew and look over the data here, we're looking at a table of numbers. <laughs> Way to state the obvious, Nicholas. Uh, on the left side, we have a number of visual tests to measure the amount of detail perceived, as well as a visual acuity. The two conditions are listed up top and the length of time. The p-values, the statistical tests to determine if there's an effect or not, are on the far right. A p-value below 0.05 indicates a likely effect. So what we see here is that not all the tests indicate improvement. Some did, however. So it's a mixed bag. In no instance did measurements show worsening results. So it at least indicates there's a neutral to positive effect. I'm encouraged by these results, although obviously seeing total improvement would be nice. It's an easy story. That said, another study corroborated these findings based on different visual tests. Keep in mind that eye health is not merely carotenoid concentration, so any improvement is impressive, and mixed results may reflect that eye function needs more than just carotenoid consumption. Okay, finally, where can we get these molecules? Well, if you're interested in supplementation, which has certain advantages over whole food consumption in this case, there is an upper ceiling where more is not better, and there is an optimal ratio between lutein and zeaxanthin. I'll be covering that in the extended version of this video, which is part of the Physionic Insiders, which also comes with access to all my work, videos, articles, product recommendations on lutein, zeaxanthin, along with other supplements, a private monthly podcast, and so much more. If you're interested, just uh, join using the link in the description. There's new content every week. So yes, supplementation is one way to go. And according to the systematic review that I mentioned earlier, the researchers mentioned that supplementation is more potent than whole food sources. However, that doesn't mean that improvements can't be achieved by whole foods. They absolutely can. So what foods contain these carotenoids? According to the researchers, dark leafy greens like kale and spinach are the mighty in their content but also green beans, squash, zucchini, and plenty of other plant-based foods. I know people report eggs have lutein in them, and that's true, but the amount of these carotenoids is very low, at least 40 times less than some plant-based sources. It is true that eggs offer more bioavailability than some of the plant-based sources as well, but it likely doesn't make up for the overall low quantity. Still, it's a fine source, and we actually see that evidenced here, comparing those who ate eggs compared to those who didn't. The data clearly shows a rise in blood carotenoids, as seen on the right side. But I would guess that levels would be more robustly increased using some more potent sources like the ones mentioned before. It's up to your dietary choices, though. You have options. So the conclusion is, Lutein and zeaxanthin should be part of your eye health routine. If you get it from supplements or whole foods, they're readily available in both. It's up to you. Now that you're more informed, you could be even more informed on your health by checking out this next video. Or not, it's your choice.